Well, Phil, th this has just been an absolutely spectacular discussion, and I, I know you have a lot of information to share with our viewing audience, but there's some other key papers that I know you want to talk about as we sort of wrap this session up. Why don't, why don't you go ahead, please? Well, there's a great deal of work that's been going on for decades where we are now seeing the results. Probably the most important in my mind are work, is work that's been done at the Mayo Clinics. And the Mayo Clinic studies have focused on women age 45 or under who are estrogen deficient, typically due to a surgical procedure. And, and are hysterectomy is pretty common in this age group? Hyster the most common age for hysterectomy is, is 46 point, well the average age is 46.1. Wow. Um, 41 to 45 is the most common age. 35 to 39 is the second most common wow. age. Well, so, you see. so by the time women get to be 50, a third of all the women in the country have no uterus. Wow. That's, that's, that's a huge number. I mean, that's well, huge. We, it absolutely is. And it does mean by, by the time the women are in their 40s or f under age 45, we've got more than a million women who have no ovarian function. So the Mayo Clinic zeroed in on those women, and they studied the women from the moment of their surgical procedure. Were they given estrogen and did they take it? Or were they not, or did they not take it, or were they not given it? Sure. Now, what they found, and I'll read it off to you, because okay. they're publishing this in many of the medical journals. If the women did not take any estrogen, their mortality, now this is before age 45 or younger, their mortality was increased by two-thirds. Early death, basically. Early death. Wow. And they've not only been emphasizing early death, but accelerated aging. Wow. Very important concept. Absolutely. Because all of the diseases that you would think of sure. that come with aging, everything from you know, loss of skin and, and deterioration to severe arthritis, sure. all of this is related. Wow as well as heart disease and dementia and sure. all of the fears we have of aging sure. is sure. accelerated in those women. Wow. But they had an equal group who received estrogen and in those women the risk of dying early was reduced by 35%, not increased by 67%. Wow. Now, if they didn't use any estrogen replacement, the risk for a heart attack was increased over 30%. The increased risk for stroke was over 60% if they didn't use estrogen after their surgery, these young women. The risk for cognitive impairment, my mind is not working right, and you prove it isn't, was over 60%. Wow. Um, the risk for developing Parkinson's <clears throat> disease was increased by 80%. Good grief, Phil. That's right. Wow. Um, the risk for osteoporosis and fracture was increased by 50%. Sex problems. Now, has Mayo published that? I mean, this it's is all critical published. Data. It's extremely it, important. It, but data. the other real question is is it widely disseminated? I mean, I'm hearing some numbers today. I, I grant you my focus is on breast cancer, but I've not heard these numbers as a general physician, if you will. No? Well, they should be more widely known. Yeah, sure. Um, they are published in the most important journals. Sure, sure. Um, the study that I quoted earlier, the study from the NIH of this twin of the two sisters yeah, study, right, right. is published in um, the American Journal of Epidemiology. Yeah. Um, no, the studies are are being published, but you've got doctors overwhelmed with information, sure. just as the general sure. public is overwhelmed. That's exactly I mean, if correct. you go, if the woman of today goes to Google and puts in estrogen and breast cancer, there's so much that's going to come up and so many different opinions are going to come up, it's got to be confusing to right. her. Right. So it's difficult to make a decision. What our foundation has been trying to do is get the correct information out to the people who need to right. know it. And that's both the general public and critically important is the physicians who 
potentially can be prescribing estrogen replacement therapy. So. Right, because all of these things I just told you, Mayo's also yeah. showed if they had estrogen replacement, yeah. most of this was avoided. Yeah, you know, I'm going to speak personally now. My mother um, had a postpartum uh, hemorrhage that ended up, her uterus was removed in her 30s. And I think back of the 35 or 40 years or whatever it was she was on Premarin, my mom lived to, into her mid-80s. And, and thank goodness she got that hormone replacement therapy. That, I'm just sitting here as you were cranking all these numbers out and talking about this, thinking, wow, I personally benefited from whoever was smart enough to have my mom on, on estrogen all those years. Right. So, wow. Phil, what other things as we get near the end? This has been a delightful conversation with you. Very informative. Are there any sort of final points that we want to want to share with our viewing audience today? Well, I really have been encouraged by the response that we've seen in the two years, a little over two years since we started this educational effort. Yeah. That. Um, we have millions of women actually who have come to empower to the site and looked at the programs and are thinking about it. Um, there's been receptivity at national meetings and we've been able to make major presentations at important meetings. So it's, and there have been many publications. Uh, I've lost track now. One of the most important that was done right here in Los Angeles, Dr. Hodes's study in which he showed if the women received within within six years of their menopause, if they received estrogen versus not getting, how it protected their arteries. Right. And so there's study after study after study. I think the pendulum is swinging. Okay. I think when you see this kind of risk-benefit difference, the benefits far outweigh. Now, besides going to empowerher.com, does AHA have its own website? It does, correct or not? No. Uh, oh, you no. do not. At this We're point. connected to Empower, and the reason is number one is that the founder of the company has maintained a very high standard. Correct. I like the way articles that are there are judged and okay. available. Uh, and we already have an audience that's built in. Okay. So, and uh, that's Michelle Robson, who we both adore. And what we, what, what we want to encourage people to do then is to go to empowerher.com forward slash aha. But you reminded me, I have to mention something else. Sure. Um, this month on PBS, they will be broadcasting a program called Hot Flash Havoc. Aha. 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 There's the aha uh -huh part of it. Yes, and, they are. All right. And Hot Flash Havoc uh, was shown last year. The stations use it during their fundraising. Yes. Um, two of our group, Dr. Hodes and myself, are part of the video that's shown. Okay. And there's also a uh, set of five CDs that we made just for it. So everything that I've talked about is of it going to be available it through is there, there. Yes. and it was distributed last year and it's going to be again oh, this fantastic. year. And the founder of Hot Flash Havoc, uh, her name is Heidi Houston, is also a member of the AHA board now. Oh, fantastic. So that's been a nice step forward there also. There we go. Well, listen, on behalf of millions of women in this country and worldwide, I want to personally thank you because you have this incredible passion and vision about this whole issue. Uh, you have uh, uh, encouraged me to, to be involved, but more importantly, you've educated me, as I think we've probably done today with our video. I want to once again welcome you to Southern California. We've got some sun, we've got some rain. Welcome again. Thank and you. for those of you who are watching, we want to encourage you to go to Empower.com, check out the link to AHA, and as they say, stay tuned, more information is coming about this very, very important subject.